Spider ham, spider ham, does whatever a ham can. Today's video is swinging in. We're going to be having a look at the new Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. This is Spin Vision Spider Ham. Part spider, part pig, Spider Ham is a web-slinging hero that makes bad guys do a triple take. As I measure off Spider Ham, I want to thank you. I want to send a thank you over to viewer Bill, who took the time and sent this my way for us to have a look at on this channel. Thanks again, Bill. The Ultra Measuretron tells us that from the bottom to the top of his head, Spider Ham stands nine inches in height, which in centimeters, let me do that right now for you, 23 centimeters exactly. Spider-Ham's first appearance, by the way, was in November 1983 in the title Marvel Tales, starring Peter Porker, the spectacular Spider-Man. Although many of us are probably introduced now to uh, Spider-Ham through the Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, and it just he looks absolutely awesome in it. He does come with some assembly. Some assembly is required, and I scratch my head as to why we have to assemble the items that we do. He comes with the back of his head. And if you look at the back of his head, there's nothing here that really would say, why would I need to add something to it? Other than only the, the only thought process I have is they did it to reduce the amount of packaging that they had to use, which almost seems to make no sense. Cardboard, from what I would imagine, even printed cardboard, would be much cheaper to produce than to produce a brand new mold, because this would have to be molded separately just so that you could attach it to the back of his head, just so you could free up the amount of space he takes up in the packaging. It doesn't really make any sense to me. I can understand, certainly, if there were batteries in here, or if there was something, like there's a little white button on the back, but as far as I can see, there's nothing that triggers, there's nothing that moves on the back of it. So again, I don't understand why this had to even be a separate piece, other than just to save space and cardboard. Makes no sense. The other thing that is perplexing with this pig is the fact that his nose, his nose presses in. Not having seen the movie, maybe his nose is supposed to press in in the movie, but if it's also something just to save on the cost of packaging, I don't understand why they just simply couldn't have molded it such. I'm trying to think as certainly as a kid, and often at times I'm often confused as having the thought process of a child. But one thing that I'm thinking is as a child, any kid's going to pick this up, immediately look on the back and think there's going to be a battery compartment, which there isn't, and immediately going to go to the front thinking, I can press this and it's going to make a sound effect or an audio clip, something, but it doesn't do either. Instead, it, it just stays in there. It doesn't spring out. Spring also would have made, made sense too. So it's, it's also like just a, a weird functioning button that really doesn't trigger anything at all. All the triggering actually happens right at the top here. He has this, not this ear, but this ear here. He'll cycle through three different eye, uh, three different eye uh, designs here. He's kind of got the cross or the angry sort of expression eyes. Quick switch of the button, you'll see now he's got black eyes, something very akin to Deadpool. Pressing it again, he'll have these eyes. And I kind of prefer these eyes as my personal favorites. Unfortunately, though, the one thing about it was what they should have done was they should have painted the outlines of his black eyes. Of course, Spider-Man, as you know, has, and even Peter Porker has this, he has whites in his eyes, and then, of course, he's got the outline of his eyes here. What they almost should have done is just done the black outlining here of his eyes and then kept the interior for solely the white parts. Because, like, it doesn't look, unfortunately, like it does in the movie. Again, if you switch it, here they've done it, and it looks a little bit more like his eyes. And then here, doesn't quite look like his eyes at all. So, again, it's 
should have been almost, they should have just black outlined here and done the white areas as the part that shows his expression. Speaking of expression, while he doesn't really necessarily have as much an expression as he does what seems to have in the movie, again, I haven't had a chance to watch the movie yet, but he's a fun little pig, a little fun spider ham. He doesn't have much in the way of posability, unfortunately, being that, well, being that he's also geared towards kids, they can simplify all the stuff that he doesn't need to necessarily have. He doesn't need to have necessarily leg articulation. So at the very least, they've just given him swiveled arms. That's all he does. His head also swivels, but it only goes left to right, unfortunately. Most, if not all, of the wow factor of him, other than for the fact it is Spider-Ham. Let's just kind of let that sink in for, for, for a second. Spider-Man, or Spider-Ham, was released in 1983. How many Spider-Ham characters, figures, toys, that is, have we actually received? So again, thank to Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse for kind of reintroducing Spider-Ham. I think that was pretty cool. Um, the button, the eye trigger effect, is very much similar to Mighty Mugs. Mighty Mugs, when they were re-released in recent memory in the last year or so, they also had the same gimmick. The, the idea that you could spin through three, I believe it was three different uh, eye expressions, and Spider-Ham can do the exact same. I mean, I'm sure it's just as a kid alone would want to be picking it up and probably just pressing this and probably keep asking mom and dad why this button. Mom, dad, why does this button press in? Is he supposed to have sound effects? I don't know. Ask your mother. Or I don't know. Ask your father. Uh, I do like the uh, sculpting that they've given him. A very cute looking body. He's got the little raised spider emblem here on the front. Nothing, unfortunately, on the back. But he does have his little uh, pig tail which as you can see has been raveled up and it's also the same coloring as the rest of his body. I don't remember whether his tail is supposed to be the same color or if his tail is actually underneath his costume and that's why of course it, it's blue instead of pink. Uh, there's the undersides of his feet uh, released in 2018. So he is a new figure and unfortunately while I haven't been able to find it uh, Spider Ham has started showing up in toy stores. And a big thank you also to viewer Bill, who took the time and sent this my way. If not for Bill, I st uh, still probably would be looking for Spider Ham. But because, again, unfortunately, I couldn't find him in any of my local toy stores. Spider Ham here is geared towards kids, so as a result, you're not going to get a whole lot of posability out of this guy. Ironically enough, some of the other Spider Verse characters, which I sort of faulted at having limited to no posability, still have more posability than poor Spider Ham here, who only has it in his head and in his arms. And that's all you're really going to get. The trade off is that you do have the spinning eyes, which is something that they've also used for the Mighty Mugs toy line. Um, it's a nice gimmick, and, you know, it gives something for the kids to do and pick up and play with him. He's not just simply a character that swivels in his arms and swivels in his head, and that's all he really does. I give it credit to Hasbro for the fact that they would have also put something else in there as well. A play factor, if you will. Kids always love play factors, and Spider-Ham with the spinning eyes definitely has it. There are weird things, decisions on the, on the part of Hasbro that I just don't quite make don't quite make any sense to me, really. Why you would put the part of the head as something that you have to, quote, assemble. Why we have to assemble something that really doesn't serve any purpose other than it just didn't fit in the package the way that it was. Again, if it would make sense if that had batteries in it, or if it had, like, accessories, something inside of that that would justify why I would want to have that even removable in the first place. And then, of course, there's his snout. Now, I know I haven't seen the movie. Maybe in the movie, it retracts. Maybe his snout moves in and out. But from a toy, any kid's going to pick that up and think that that is supposed to be a gimmick. They're going to be pressing it repeatedly in and out and asking why it doesn't work. Why doesn't it have sound effects? Why doesn't it light up? Why did they even include that in the first place? other than just one extra component piece, which really ultimately causes the price point of uh, Spider-Ham to be more expensive than if they just kept the snout as is. They had kept the snout and the back plate of his head as something that was already part of the figure. Maybe the figure would be a little bit less expensive. And yet, anyone I'm sure can think to themselves, well, I mean, 
they obviously had to fit it in the same similar packaging. It probably was the same packaging, and I haven't really checked yet, as the Scorpion. Maybe Scorpion and Spider-Ham share the exact same packaging. The printing, of course, is different, but the packaging is very similar. That Maybe that's the reasoning why, but I, again, I would feel like making the mold as two separate pieces would be more expensive to produce, to cast, and to make the materials from than it would be just if they made one head and called it a day. Either way, a little nitpicking on this reviewer's part. It's a fun little pick up and play toy. The gimmick, I think, is cer certainly what sells it to the kids, but I'm just happy the fact that we got ourselves spider ham toys, which I never thought I would ever see the day, and yet here we are. Several years later, because I used to collect the spider ham comics back in the day, so several, I won't even say years, several decades later, we're having a look at spider ham on this channel. Either way, if you guys are interested in picking this one up for yourself, some good news, for the most part, you should be able to find these. I'm hesitant when I say that because I wasn't able to find it, but sure enough, good viewer Bill was able to pick this up and send this my way. But in all possibilities, you should be able to find Spider-Ham in comic book stores, toy stores, retail stores, if you guys are looking to pick this one up and add it to your collection. Today, like I said, we were having a look at the Hasbro Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. This was Spider-Ham, a fun little figure. If you guys want to go back and have a look at some of my other Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse figure reviews, there's a whole playlist just for that. Also, if you haven't had a chance, hit that little subscribe button down below. Make sure you do so, because certainly more videos will be coming your way. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.